Okay, this video is called The Science of Plant-Based Eating because a lot of people say, well, tell me the science. Okay, I'm going to tell you the science right now real fast. All right, so first of all, there's like a lot of nonsense on the internet of people trying to pretend that paleo, keto, carnivore is some type of serious diet. It's all fake. It's all a big joke. And let me just show you why that is. All right, let me get myself out of the way here. Okay, so animal food is high in fat. The type of fat in animal food is especially saturated fat. Animal food also has a lot more of the omega-6 arachidonic acid fat, which is quite inflammatory. Saturated fat is quite atherogenic. Despite what you might have heard about it, there's mountains of data to show it increases blood cholesterol with a predisposition to causing atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is a blood clot. It plugs up your arteries. Everything in your body works better with good blood flow. So with animal foods eaten in excess for decades, you plug up your arteries and then things don't work well. Your heart, your brain, your Johnson, and everything else. Okay, animal food is very low in potassium. That's bad. It's very low in magnesium. That's bad. There's zero dietary fiber. Those same things, fiber, magnesium, and uh, potassium are high in plant foods. They all are vasodilators. They all open up arteries. Animal food tends to be salted a lot and also sometimes the salt's used as a preservative. Salt is bad. When I say salt, I mean sodium chloride. It's a precursor to vasoconstriction. It inhibits endothelial nitric oxide synthase. It inhibits the production of nitric oxide, the main uh, vasodilator artery opener in the body. Okay, so it's bad. Um, so basically, people who eat animal food diets and processed food diets, they have um, problems with their gut bacteria. They get leaky gut, increased intestinal permeability. That's associated with high blood pressure. It's associated with autoimmune disease. It's associated with blood clotting, prothrombotic, increases tendency to clot. The high fat diets cause atherosclerosis, plug up the arteries of the heart, the Johnson, the brain. Uh, the same thing as the high fat makes the blood cells stick together, the red blood cells, so it causes hypertension. Hypertension damages artery, causes strokes and heart attacks. The high fat is the main cause of insulin resistance, especially saturated fat, and that then leads to diabetes. Diabetes then damages blood vessels all over the body, it makes people go blind, causes kidney failure, causes microvasculopathy in the foot. They often get amputations of their toes, midfoot, transmetatarsal, then below the knee, BKA. Okay, if they smoke cigarettes on top of that, they'll often get an upper leg uh, thigh amputation. It's really bad for peripheral vascular disease, for vascular disease everywhere. Uh, diabetic retinopathy, diabetic kidney disease, diabetic nephropathy. Um, there's also a lot of times estrogen chemicals in the meat because they give them estrogen to fatten up the uh, cattle more quickly. You get bad gut bacteria with a meat diet because you don't have the fiber. Fiber is what produces good gut bacteria. So what I'm trying to say here is when it comes to health, Meat and processed food are terrible. They're both bad. And I don't care if it's grass-fed organic meat. It's still bad. Yeah, grass-fed organic meat and beef is better than if that weren't the case, but it's still bad for you. With a meat-based diet, you get increased incidence of inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, obesity, abdominal pressure syndrome. Um, I'm going to go through the individual nutrients in a moment after, but what I'm trying to say is you lose. It's not like the score is 5-4. to four. It's a close match, win by one point in overtime, plants versus meat. No. You win 100 to zero uh, with a plant-based diet. Is there anything that meat is good for? Well, I do think you get a little more creatine, and I think there's a slight anabolic effect from eating meat. Let's say you're a 20-year-old athlete or bodybuilder, there'd be some advantage to eating some meat. I do think that is for real. Uh, but you know, once you get past 30, if you're not a world-class strength athlete, I think it's best to be 100% vegan. I'm 61 years old. I'm 100% vegan. It's the way to go. I say that based on you know being a doctor over 30 years with extensive study of nutrition. Um, the only thing you need to take as a supplement if you're 100% vegan for years is, is B12. Methylcobalamin is the best version of it. Okay, But all these other diseases, all the common diseases, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, coronary artery disease, peripheral vascular disease, kidney failure, dementia, they're all much more common in people who eat a meat-based diet or processed food and oils. Okay. So all of the science, not even a little bit, it's always, they always win. If you look at, you know, uh, population studies, if you look at migration studies, when a population migrates towards a Western diet, they always get fatter and sicker. Okay, let's go through the individual ingredients here. In a plant-based diet, you got fiber. Fiber is a wonderful thing. Jeff Nelson at VegSource has a quote. He says, fiber is life, pharma is death, okay? Fiber is eaten by the good gut bacteria, and they use it to maintain your gut lining. They're called enterocytes. It's a single cell thick that lines your gut, and they need tight junctions between them so you don't get leaky gut. 
You don't want leaky gut because if you have leaky gut, bacteria and bacterial toxins can get across your gut line and get into your blood, cause all kinds of problems, autoimmune disease, etc. The same, uh, so what happens is the gut bacteria convert the dietary fiber into butyrate. Butyrate is a short chain fatty acid. It maintains the gut wall and helps it produce tight junctions. It goes into your blood, up to your brain, maintains the blood brain barrier, maintains the retina blood barrier, helps maintain the kidney barrier from the blood and the glomerulus. So you really need that to have all your important membranes functioning well. Potassium is a vasodilator. P for plants, P for potassium. Potassium is much, much higher in plants. Our ancestors probably ate about 20 times as much potassium as sodium, whereas the modern America, American, because they eat meat and processed food, they're eating more sodium than potassium. That messes up all your plasma membrane ion gradients. Normally, we are designed for a high potassium, low sodium diet. So when you eat the opposite of it, you dissipate your plasma membrane gradient. The plasma membrane gradients are like a battery for energy in your cells. And you, you basically weaken cellular function. Okay, it's, it's a stupid thing to do. Nitrates in, in plant foods come with a lot of antioxidants, and they are precursors for nitric oxide vasodilator. Magnesium is used by all your ATP yielding reactions, including your plasma membrane ion pumps, plasma membrane, potassium, sodium, ATP as ion pump. So you really need that, and it's necessary for maintaining vasodilation, keeping arteries open. Uh, your antioxidants come from plants, like vitamin C. And the reason is an animal, if it's hot outside, can go in the shade. A plant has to sit in the hot sun, so it has to produce chemicals called antioxidants to protect itself from the energy of the sun so it doesn't burn up and get over-oxidized. Plant foods are alkaline, and that's beneficial to our body. We have a tendency to become acidotic, which is pro-cancerous, and it's bad for our health. It causes muscle wasting and other problems and osteoporosis. Okay, animal foods are highly acidic. They're the most acidic thing in our diet, animal foods, so they're bad as far as that's concerned, okay? Uh, most plant foods are low in protein, and Americans eat way too much protein. Average Americans eat eating about 100 grams a day of protein. They really would be better off if they were eating about 30 grams a day of protein, okay? A third of what they eat, okay? Um, the best thing to eat is primarily complex carbohydrates, also known as starch. A complex carbohydrate is a polymer of glucose wrapped in fiber, and it's the best food in the world because it stretches your stomach to provide early satisfaction of hunger because it's low caloric density. Then once it goes into your small intestine, the enzymes peel the fiber off and you slowly absorb the glucose and it has the effect of a slow release energy pill. So you satisfy your hunger by having a normal blood glucose level for a prolonged amount of time and you satisfy your hunger with the fewest number of calories. So they're skinny. You, you look at a starch eating population where they eat predominantly starch, the vast majority of their calories, you know, like 70% or more, they're all skinny. Look at China before 1975, a billion out of a billion were skinny that ate that way, which was most of the population. Okay, and it's the same wherever they eat starch-based diet. Papua New Guinea, where they ate 93% of their calories of sweet potatoes. They're all skinny muscle men, okay? Um, the phosphates in a uh, plant don't tend to be very much absorbed because they're bound to phytate. That's a good thing because you don't want to absorb too many phosphates. Um, what else? Iron is relatively poorly absorbed, which is good because the vast majority of Americans, uh, men in their 20s and up, are iron overload, and it's pretty toxic. Women can be lower in iron because they're menstruating until they're postmenopausal, then uh, Western women tend to become iron overloaded. A couple of plant foods that I don't like is I think you should avoid the high fat plant foods because they tend to contribute to causing obesity and that's things like soy and flax and nuts and seeds. Soy and flax are estrogenic off the charts uh, and based on my study of the literature on especially the early literature which is more reliable before all the corporations started controlling what gets published about their product. Uh, they're estrogenic, they can interfere with uh, puberty, they interfere with fertility. Um, I would strongly recommend avoiding them, okay? And I know other people are going to praise them. Yeah, right. You know, soy is close to 40% fat, percent of calories from fat. Flax, close to 60% of calories from fat. The higher the percentage of calories from fat, the fatter the population gets, the fatter you get. And these seeds are bad, too. They're very high in fat. Um, Sunflower seeds often have lead contamination in them. They're bad. Okay, what are other problems with meat? We talked about sat fat being very atherogenic, very diabetogenic. Um, they also decrease oxygen delivery to the tissues, like the Peter Quo paper there, um, the work of Dr. McDougall and Dr. Royce Swank. So they make your tissues hypoxic, deplete, deprive it up partially of oxygen. That's bad. That can injure mitochondria, lead to Warburg effect, increase risk of cancer. 
Okay, animal protein is bad compared to plant protein because animal protein has more uh, leucine, which, you know, if you're a bodybuilder 20 years of age, you might want that to activate mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin, and the nutrient sensing pathway that tells the cell, the replicator, to grow. But when you're older, you're more concerned about cancer. Let's say you're over 30, you're not a world-class competitive strength athlete, then you're more concerned about preventing cancer. So you don't want anything turning on mTOR unnecessarily, okay? Methionine is a sulfur-containing amino acid present in higher amounts in meat. It partially gets metabolized to sulfuric acid, so that causes a metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis is bad. It partially paralyzes the immune system, and it increases the risk of cancer spread and growth. It favors a cancerogenic milieu, tumor microenvironment. That's bad. Okay, when you accelerate uh, mTOR, it means you accelerate the rate of cell replication. So your body only has about 60 cell divisions in your uh, somatic cells, meaning your non-germ cells, for example, non-stem cells. And so you accelerate aging once they get to about 60 cell divisions because the chromosome shortens a little bit with each cell replication. Um, the cell eventually dies because you start shortening it into uh, genes that you need for proteins that you need. So you don't want to accelerate arrival at the Hayflick limit, which means to accelerate aging. Um, let's see, what else? Animal protein is very acidic. Yeah, I talked about that. Fish and cheese are like some of the worst, and that causes osteoporosis because the kidneys have to buffer the pH, and they'll simultaneously excrete the protons, H+, with calcium. They take that calcium from the bones and the muscle, so that's not good. Um, let's see, you create more work for your kidneys when you eat animal protein, too, because not only do you have the plant protein, you do have some creatine and, cre and, creatine and creatinine, uh, from animal foods that you don't get from plant foods. Again, if you're a 20-year-old bodybuilder, you might want that. But if you're older, you don't want that. Uh, I talked about them having more arachidonic acid, omega-6 uh, fat associated with inflammation, more estrogenics, which can cause obesity, more biomagnified pesticide accumulation as the one animal, the, the animal livestock eats higher on the food chain. They often feed it tons and tons of non-organic uh, let's say soy or corn that's been sprayed with atrazine or glyphosate and then that's bioaccumulated and concentrated in the animal and when you eat it you get all that toxins. The phosphates are more bioabsorbable. People can become more uh, overloaded in phosphates especially if they have kidney failure and those are harmful to your health. Uh, let's see, meat's often fried, bad. Fried's always bad. It's bad not only because intrinsically, because it's prone to lipid peroxidation and the production of toxic aldehydes like hydroxynonanol. You also have the nonstick cookware, which can get toxic uh, fluoride metabolites into your food. Not good. Xenocyelitis means that the sialic acids, which are at the end of the glycoprotein and your glycocalyces, they're like the ID card of the immune system. The immune system works by braille. It feels every cell and says, okay, you're self or non-self. You belong here. You don't. So you have to have these sialic acids that are characteristic of your body. And if you've got the wrong ones, because the animal foods like the beef, it can give you sialic acids that are similar enough to your own that your body incorporates them into your glycoproteins, but your immune system still recognizes them as different. You know, there's a difference between something called new 5GC versus new 5AC. Okay, the bottom line is you get xenophorin, sialitis, sialic acids, and it'll cause autoimmune disease. Um, there could be viruses in the meat that you are vulnerable to, like bovine leukemia virus, I thought is uh, disease causing. Meat in general is associated with all kinds of weird diseases like autoimmune disease. You know, dairy is associated with type 1 diabetes. Uh, dairy is the number one thing associated with multiple sclerosis. Okay, so those are two pretty bad diseases, MS and uh, type 1 diabetes. Uh, you produce more toxic chemicals in your gut, like heterocyclic amines and doxyl sulfate, p cresol sulfate, indole acetic acid, all this bad stuff because of the lack of dietary fiber, and then you, you favor bad bacteria when you don't have dietary fiber in the gut, increasing your risk of colon cancer and cardiovascular disease, more carnitine and choline in meat, so you make more of something called trimethylamine, which gets converted to trimethylamine oxide in the liver, and it's atherogenic. So meat just pushes you towards increased atherosclerosis, increased cancer, increased hypertension, increased diabetes. It's all bad. I am not. I could care less about animal rights. Most of the animal rights people I've met in my life, I think they're jerks. A lot of them are, you know, uh, Ka, you know what, me, you know what, East, okay? Uh, so I'm not a fan of that group. I was, I knew the environmentalist people and most of them in my experience also I thought were jerks. They don't like people. They would say to me, oh, we don't really care that much about the animals. We just want to keep the people off the land, and we need to get the farmers off the land. And I'm like, you know what? I like farmers. A lot of my friends are farmers, and you know what? They grow food for us. I think that's pretty valuable. 
So what I'm trying to say is I come to health and interest in a plant-based diet just because it's what's best for health, not for any philosophical reasons. Or, okay. Yeah, I mean, people should be nice to animals, but it's not, that's not a big issue in my life. Okay, comparison of animal and plant protein. I went through that. Basically, an animal food is only fat and protein, other than milk has some la uh, lactose in it, whereas you know the, the plant foods where you get all the carbohydrates, and that's the good stuff. That's what you want to be the majority of your diet. You know, anywhere from like 60 to 90 percent of your calories. Here's some sample foods just to show you what's in these foods. A typical meat, let's say salmon, 50 percent fat, 50 percent protein with no carbohydrate. That's a terrible food. You want to keep your fat and your protein both at 10 percent or less. So you can't do that with foods like salmon, chicken, beef. They're all bad. And then nuts are bad too. Tons of fat, 70 to 90 percent of fat. They're also acidic. They're also high in advanced glycation end products. They're a bad idea. Okay, soybeans are really high in fat. Okay, they're also quite high in protein, like beans in general. Oatmeal is okay, a little higher in fat than I would like in the ballpark of 15%. Now here's three great starches. Potatoes, only 1% of calories from fat. Sweet potatoes, only 1% of calories from fat. White rice, only 1% of calories from fat. That's good. Anybody who eats a lot of that is probably going to be skinny. My favorite of these would be the sweet potatoes because they only have 4.5% of their calories from protein. So you want lower amounts of protein. Americans eat way too much protein. They eat more than triple what they should be eating typically. And that can be very toxic to your kidneys. It's also atherogenic. It also increases blood cholesterol levels when it comes from animal protein especially. Um, let's see. Fruits, I think, are underrated. Fruits, I think, are a pretty good food. Dr. McDougall was concerned that he thinks that people eat too much fruit. They can overeat them. They don't satisfy hunger as quickly as a starch does. These are all starches in here. But there are some extraordinary things about fruit. They're super low in fat. That's good. And they're also very low in protein. That's good. They also contain fiber and antioxidants. That's all good. They're also very low in advanced glycation end products. So they're very healthy. Okay, so in summary, what am I kind of recommending? I'm recommending what I call the Spartan Vegan Diet. I, I gave it this name, Spartan Vegan Diet, and it's really pretty much very, very, very similar to the Dr. McDougall diet or to the Caldwell Esselstyn diet. And basically, the, the cornerstone of your diet is to eat mostly starch. For example, I eat about 60% of starches. McDougall would say you should eat 90% of your calories from starch. And then I eat about 35% of my calories from fruits, and then I eat about 5% from veggies. Okay, McDougall would say 90% starch, 5% fruits, 5% veggies. Dr. John McDougall is considered the greatest doctor who ever lived. And then number two would be considered probably Walter Kempner. Um, they're both recommended vegan diets. Okay, um, then the only supplement I take is vitamin B12, you know, methylcobalamin. I wouldn't take cyanol. I think that's a bad idea. Um, and then, you know, the foundation of the social stuff. Maintain your social support system, you know, good relationship with your friends, your family. Do some physical exercise, strength, and aerobic exercise. Get your sunshine for multiple reasons in addition to vitamin B12. Get your sleep. Have a strong sense of purpose. And um, people who are religious, they're all healthier too. But anyways, that's uh, the science of plant-based diets. I hope that was helpful for you.